Well, good afternoon, Governor Nome. Uh, my name is Sam Williams, and I have the honor of interviewing you today. Thank you for joining us. Oh, this is fantastic. Thank you for inviting me, Sam. Absolutely. So you're you're a long way from the Black Hills, uh -huh. and we know that this was uh, this was something that you found important to uh, to come to and to contribute. So we want to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And this is part of our time capsule to sort of commemorate some of the main themes that people from all over the country mm -hmm. and in different walks of life have found important about Coolidge's legacy. So maybe if you could just start by talking, us, uh, talking to us about what your, for, your first uh, connection with Coolidge was. Well, you know, first. Calvin Coolidge is a big part of South Dakota's history. He spent the summer of 1927 in our state uh, at Custer State Park, enjoying our outdoors, and fully intended I believe when he first arrived to only spend three weeks in Custer State Park, but ended up spending three months. In fact, in South Dakota is where President Coolidge announced that he would not be seeking re-election to the presidency. Um, and so we have always been very honored that we're a part of, of his story, uh, but also even the way he led in the different positions he held throughout his life are quite inspirational. So. Today, to get to speak with folks who recognize the lessons we can learn from his life and to recall some of his quotes that have truly focused on the ideals of America uh, was a special time for me as well. Well, you mentioned sort of the ideals from his life and mm -hmm. what he embodied. And earlier in your speech, you mentioned how you turned away federal aid, mm -hmm. uh, which is as cool as it gets. Uh, so maybe what, what from his lifetime did you learn or encounter and sort of feel a connection to most? Because I know both of you um, are from a more rural background mm -hmm. on the farm and you're more of a rancher, so mm -hmm. there's that connection there. So what is the personal connection there for I you? Love, I love the fact that President Coolidge was also a man of few words. He was a man of action. And, and that is, most people don't know that about me, myself personally, is I tend to be more of an introvert. I love mm -hmm. people and being with people, um, but for me, if I'm going to go do something restful and relaxing. It'll be outdoors. It'll be fishing. It'll be uh, spending time hunting or hiking. And that's what President Coolidge loved as well. So that that type of, um, you know, familiar um, activities and love for the outdoors is something that attracted me to him originally. But, you know, his work ethic was inspirational. Today I spoke uh, about the American work ethic and how it needs to be preserved for the future. And and his embracement of personal responsibility um, and returning federal aid that wasn't necessary when people could provide for themselves mm -hmm. and for those amongst them, uh, you know, really is something that we need to be remembered and reminded of today. Um, you know, we in South Dakota made some very difficult decisions the last few years. I, as governor, made some decisions during the pandemic that were different than any other state. We never shut our business down. We never shut our churches down didn't mandate anything. We returned uh, federal assistance on, on rental properties uh, that people didn't utilize because they were working and in their jobs. We also did not take the elevated unemployment benefits and have one of the lowest unemployment um, rates in the country. In fact, I think today I have less than a thousand people that are on unemployment in the entire wow. state today because everybody recognizes the value and the purpose of getting up and providing for their families. and. That's really the story that President Coolidge perpetuated during his leadership positions as well. Hmm. I know back then, a century ago, this is obviously mm -hmm. the centennial celebration. They were also coming out of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. There were wars abroad, you know, right. many, many of the similar things that we're going through today. So obviously those times should instruct us now and you've clearly um, learned from those lessons and uh, embodied them and implemented them in the real world. Um, what do you think are the most prescient themes from, from Coolidge that we need in America today, perhaps maybe aimed at a lower, um, at a younger generation moving forward? Well, you know, I think it's a good reminder to all of us that, that hard things that we go through um, don't have to be looked on negatively. Um, they can refine us. They can bring us back to our original ideals and values. And also they can help give us an opportunity to overperform. Uh, you have hard things that come your way and challenges many times when we communicate about them, especially in the news today and in the national press. Uh, they like to make division and conflict uh, normal. I would say that we have an opportunity here to tell President Coolidge's story and how he led through challenging times that are very similar to ours. And he did it in a way with 
promoting solutions and bringing people together and, and not using divisive words um, to, to make people believe or in, in what we, he was doing as an approach, that he actually went out there and led by example. And mm. I think those are reminders that are important to us. Many times, I think the perception is with the general public today that we're in unprecedented times. We are. Um, I would say that there are unique things about today's challenges, but people went through hard things before. And um, President Coolidge faced a situation much like uh, some of what we're seeing today, and we can learn from how he handled it. Well, absolutely. I think your, your thought that action mm -hmm. is often much more important than just, man, this is really bad. You mentioned don't complain, yeah. fix. Yeah, don't complain about things, right. fix them. That was a quote that my dad used all the time, you know, and, and we do. In, in the government and politics today, a lot of people are big talkers. There's not very mm. many doers anymore. So uh, I'm always looking for people um, because of my background, because of my family and the presidents that I admire like Coolidge, they were doers. They were people who thought strategically. They were thinking two or three steps ahead to make sure that people were best prepared for every situation they went into and to make them more independent and, and to let them live more with freedom and liberty that America can only provide. Um, right now we tend to have leaders and especially you know, in the government today who tend to enslave people to the systems of government. Um, that was not what America was created for or is about or should be about today. Mm. Well, I know Calvin Coolidge was fixing posts, <laughs> defensing back then, and you've done that uh, literally and figuratively back yeah. home in South Dakota. And again, just thank you so much for allowing us to capture some of your thoughts here to celebrate oh, the centennial of Coolidge. Anytime. What an honor to be with you. Thank, thank you, you very much.